Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and today I'm gonna show you the short review about this wonderful cockpit that we have on Boeing 737. So our journey starts here where you usually enter through this door and you see the cockpit from this position uh, from the distance side I would say and from the distance you can you can find some rubbish you can make a security check everywhere and you can spot maybe some switches are not in the proper position then you first look inside the cockpit you can see there are lots of switches and lights here especially if I put the light test you will see lots of amber blue lights and some red lights green lights quite confusing I would say if you are not familiar with this cockpit as on every modern aircraft the cockpit on a Boeing 737 is divided into several groups and several areas and panels and each panel and area uh, corresponds to some specific system it may look quite confusing to see all those switches but it's quite simple guys but to understand this uh, cockpit you need to have the type rating for example I was flying the ETR 72 600 and if you put me in a Boeing cockpit by that time I would not probably understand most of the systems so to get into it you need to have the deep type rating you need to study flight crew operational manual and systems the purpose of this video is to give you quick familiarization with the Boeing 737 cockpit I would give the, the brief brief of these systems and in what areas are they located we will not tell you uh, detailed information about all those switches maybe I'll tell you in separate videos about for example IRS system or something I'll describe you in more particular way otherwise it will take me all the day to describe you all those switches so I think I'll make it a separate video about all the systems for now just to make a brief review and now guys let's start uh, I'll tell you about these panels okay this is aft overhead panel over here and here we have a uh, forward overhead panel here we have a glare shield and here we have forward left panel forward right panel forward central panel um, aisle stand uh, control stand and aft electronic panel two seats captain first officer circuit breakers here and behind the captain's back as well some circuit breakers located down here observer seat is here you can just I'll put the maintenance slot out I will just put the seat I want to show you oh, just a minute so it just pumps up and I'll put it down okay very uncomfortable seat for observer and this oxygen mask for observer so let's continue with our panel okay after overhead panel is here and the main system on this after overhead panel actually there are two main very important systems uh, first is inertial reference system here so this uh, panel this mode selector this alignment control let's put the system to align I'll switch off the light test let's put the system on, on a line on DC on DC it's a self test and now it should turn to a line a line a line they have two uh, RS systems on a Boeing 737 just as a backup uh, this is just the audio station I'll tell you later about it and the second important system on the after overhead panel is electronic engine control ECs reversers everything this is electronic engine control you can switch electronic engine control off by this button 
they both should be on or off. If one fails, you should switch off the next one. We have oxygen masks here. They're connected to the cylinder, to our oxygen cylinder. And here we have the pressure. In this graphic, you can see the minimum pressure. This is the passenger oxygen supply activates the oxygen supply uh, in the cabin for the passengers. Flight recorder, we mainly not use it. And here we use it every time. This mug here speed warning test. So if you have over speed, you'll hear this. The stall warning. As you can see, control column starts to shake because every control column uh, has a special motor here and also on the first officer side separate motor so then the airplane approaches to the stall limit for the speed the stick, stick shaker activates and this control column starts to vibrate so that's a stall warning test what else we have here uh, Land gear secondary indication, so just as safe purpose uh, on the NG they put the secondary indication. So if your main indication fails or some light would fail, you have the secondary chance to identify your gear position. Here we have leading edge device position for every slat and every flap. So these are flaps, the big ones, those are small for the slats. Good to understand the uh, leading edge device current position and it, if it's extended or not. Oh, just forgot about the ELT we have here, emergency locator transmitter. It's always in arm and you can select it on as well. Uh, this is satellite system. If your aircraft would hit the ground very hard, if it crash or something, it will automatically send the signal transmission to the satellite system Kaspaster Sat, and emergency rescue will should actually arrive to your uh, crash place and rescue everyone. This downward switch activates this and this bulb over here. We are now in a line position for the inertial reference system and four minutes left for the alignment process to finish and I'm doing this guys just to show you uh, indication on the prime and fire display and navigation display as you see now it's unreadable because the aircraft cannot find its position because we don't have any gyro any gyroscopes to put the position go to our current location so I need to put very small way airport we are now put very small over here it goes to the next and we put the GPS very precise position in iris position that's all guys and we are waiting now for iris to be aligned and we will have some kind of indication on front and front display and navigation display. Now we continue with the forward overhead panel that we have here. Very large panel on the 737 and all systems, well most systems, located here. I'll take my usual seat to show you guys everything. So guys, this is flight controls operation. Mainly in normal flight we use only this. Just on a per flight, your damn for on. That's all we need. As you can see, it's now on. And nothing else, really, guys. It's uh, alternative reps extension operation, flight control switches. If you have some kind of problem with the hydraulic system, you switch on a standby. Spoiler we don't use maintenance, usually, we use it for test, some annunciators, and that's all. Very simple system, actually. The next step is navigation and display control switches. So for example, if your one of your IRSs fail, you can set both on the left. Uh, if your 
display control panel, this panel for example. One panel fails, you can put both on the left and control both screens, both DUs from the same panel. The next system is for fuel. So we have valve operation, we have fuel temperature, we have filter bypass as usual, crossfeed here, uh, pumps, selectors, central pumps and central tank, left wing tank, right wing tank, very easy. Let's go on the upper side here we have electrical system. Indications for battery, auxiliary battery, transfer rectifiers, etc. Here we can see the ground power is now okay, frequency, voltage, everything. Here we have in integrated generator drive and disconnect switches, standby power uh, switch, mainly we don't use it in a normal flight. Ground power is available and it's running, we have electrical system on operation right now. If you have engines running, you can put the engines on your electrical system and disconnect the ground power. You can put the APU as well online with those switches, but APU is off right now. On the bottom here we have APU annunciators, if something will go wrong with your auxiliary power unit. Here we have in the AGT indication exhaust gas temperature for APU. I don't know why on NG we have this instrument. There are no any limitations in flight crew operations manual for NG airplane. Just for classic it was uh, some limits for uh, APU start and operation here they just left it. I don't know why. So we start APU with this switch. Here are the wipers like you have on your car probably. There is wiper. So separate indication and some different spades you can select with the left switch and as well as in the right switch. Here are circuit breaker lights, lights, equipment cooling, fans, uh, emergency exit light and fasten bells usually. Boom. And you see the fasten bell sign all over the cabin compartment. And yeah, this we call for a flight tenant. Dun dun. But this button we call the ground stuff. Okay guys, I'm changing my position because we are going on another side here. Okay, so here we have a window heat because we have a heated windows uh, on the airplane. I'll tell you later why we have heated windows everywhere. Probes heat and you can just put it on. And before takes you just check that everything is extinguished over here. I'll just put it off and you'll see it's now out of service. The wing anti-ice system uh, and engine anti-ice system. Hydraulic system, we have different pumps, electrical driven and engine driven uh, hydraulic pumps. Doors open indication, we have now forward entry door open and up service door open. Here we have cockpit voice recorder, that's actually mic here and it records audio uh, inside the cockpit. And here is the most difficult and major system on a Boeing 737, I would say, uh, the air system. It goes from here all around here. So it's a huge air system. This instrument shows the cabin altitude and differential pressure indications. It's a cabin rate, a vertical speed indicator, Here's the air condition and temperature control, where you control the temperature of the cockpit uh, compartment and cabin compartment through all those three switches. I'll explain you guys later in a separate videos about all those systems. Here we have uh, bleed and packs controls. So, so the bleeds are on right now and packs should be on here with those switches and isolation valve, some indications. Uh, it's actually very very simple, this is duct pressure that we need for engine start to check before the engine start. Here we have pressurization system. Here you put your expected flight level and your destination airport elevation. You leave this switch in auto and the aircraft will do the pressurization uh, process by itself. It will compute 
and pressurize the cockpit to this uh, flight level according to this table probably you'll see and also I have a manual selector here you put a manual have a green manual and you control this valve the main, main outfall valve using this toggle switch you can see it is now closed and if you put a note again the aircraft will feel that it's on the ground and it would start to open the valve as you can see little by little it is opening right now these switches on the bottom on the forward overhead panel are all four lights except this, this and this and those are start switches and we use it for engine start you put it in ground uh, you wait for rotation you put the fuel on and that's how you start the engine on a Boeing 737 and that's all for now I'll later I'll explain you more about this system this is glare shield my friends and very important systems located on this glare shield here we have an oscillator if you have system failure this light pumps out here we have a detailed information where to go where to look so for example something is wrong with your fuel we go oh we have low pressure light so we have a low pressure and we go to particular checklist in our cure range so basically that's what you have in your car then you have a engine check for example you have engine check and theater and you go to maintenance and they will tell you what exactly do we have on airplane you have for example engine check and you understand now exactly what happened to your system so here you don't need to go to the maintenance to understand what is happening to your uh, airplane this is very nice panel I like it on NG much more useful compared to 737 classic where you have the FS control panel this is FS control panel and basically you control those two display units with this control for example here you have bar bar means your minimum of 630 with this knob I can put for example more I can put up to let's say 1000 and I can change it very very easily I can change altimeter setting here pressure etc very very useful I can have many modes I can for example have a map display over here so it's my airplane the triangle and I can put in a very basic mode for example for approach I can put like this also we have vertical profiles etc and uh, yeah I really enjoy working with the FS control panel on NG I really like it the first officer has exact the same FS control panel as the captain has and we have a common very interesting panel here it's called MCP mainly used to control your airplane during the flight so you control the flight director system the autopilot over here several modes you controlling the auto throttle here by selecting it on so it is used for automatic flight control and let's go to flight instruments guys it's a forward uh, left panel and here we have some clock airplane watches I would say a nozzle steering switch and the most interesting thing is uh, inner DU and outer DU which is also primary flight display and navigation display I also like the primary flight display on NG because it's very big even bigger compared to Airbus or ETR it's actually huge has nice indication speed tape well exactly like on the Airbus actually speed tape altitude tape vertical speed indication molds here here we have magnetic heading preset heading radio altimeter selected altitude uh, altimeter setting everything actually and also we have some annunciators here look through this corner there's nothing here but if I put display source on one here have display source to indication 
So also used as annunciator. Navigation display uh, is very simple also to use. I already show you some different modes, but maybe in future videos I'll be more precise and I'll show you exactly what it does. If one of those panels would fail, for example, this panel fails, but you still able to fly because you have many displays. So you may put this one, uh, this one, this one here. So we have a primary display over here. And on the bottom one, you don't need this hydraulic information uh, during the flight. It's used just for pre-flight. So you may put with this switch navigation display over here and you will fly like this very very easy so we have a primary display and navigation display and you may return everything as it was before some initiators for autopilot auto throttle and flight management computer uh, warnings separate warnings and also we have a more feature in G uh, integrated standby flight display which is integrated right here and it looks exactly like primary flight display just a little bit smaller and it is supplied by IRS number one it doesn't have any separate gyroscope etc so it mainly is supplied with the same gyroscope as PFD over here it's RMI and you can find it on every airplane actually it shows a relative bearing to VR station or to ADF station very easy to use on a central panel here we have manual selectors for engine and speed tapes and for weights but mainly in normal flight we don't use these switches and selectors uh, we use auto brake for example before takeoff you put it in RTO, it goes with a self-test and now it's extinguished, it means it is in operation and the kit should be always on, it's like ABS on our car Flap position indicator, we have many flaps position on a Boeing 737 as you can see unlike on Airbus, we have many positions but for example, we rarely use position 2, we rarely use position 10 and 25. Sometimes we use it uh, for deceleration purpose, but mainly we use uh, 0, 1, 5, 15, 30, or 40. So almost like an Airbus for a normal flight. These are multifunctional display controls, so we control this lower uh, DU with the engine parameters you can see the engine parameters over here or you can see hydraulic system parameters sometimes you have you know, flight airfoils deflection over here on some airplanes could be installed on the upper view we have uh, engine instruments which is n1 rotation so it's basically the fan rotation uh, speed in percentage EGT uh, exhaust gas temperature and uh, fuel flow sometimes we don't have fuel flow depends on aircraft modification sometimes we have it just here also fuel flow and we have some engine parameters indication lights as well here we have fuel quantity so totally now it's 3700 kilos central tank is empty left tank on the left wing and right tank on the right wing and also we have a fuel indication over here in our MCDU. Landing gear position indication, three greens and landing gear lever, it's now down and locked. On the lower part we have aisle stand and we have control display units. Basically we use it to communicate with the aircraft. So we set all the data here, for example, this performance in each init page we put all the data, zero fuel weight, health index, the flight level we want to fly. In this page we put the uniform kilo, bravo, bravo, for example, our Bristol airport and we want to go to, for example, Amsterdam. E -hum. Goes here, 
and you put your runway for departure you put your uh, points for the flight route and it's very nice to have this feature because you can communicate with the aircraft and you can engage uh, many automatic systems which can help you during the flight here we have some airflow on this side here is the controls for the brightness for example for this display etc uh, bang background lights this light control is located in very proper position so you can adjust very quickly your lights depends on whether you fly it, uh, during the day or during the night time nice to have it control stand guys it goes with the trimmer trimmer activates usually with this switch if you want to activate it manually, just pull this handle here and you rotate it manually. The speed brake lever activates the interceptors on your wing. It has several positions, uh, down arm, flight detent for flight operation and up is mainly used on the ground upon landing. Here we have the thrust levers that control the engine thrust. They have reverses, we have some buttons here, here for auto throttle disconnect and these buttons are for go around. Here we have the parking brake and if you want to set it, it's now released as you can see, you need to put the brakes on and you need to put the parking brake. And this red light shows that your parking brake is set, I'll release it. Engine start lever is basically used to supply fuel uh, to combustion chamber into the engines used for engine start. Flaps. As I said, we have many flaps position. This is a flap selector. And trim indication on this side, trim indication on this side. Stop trim cutout switches are located here. You put it in cutout and you cut out the input for example, main electric trim would cut out and you cannot control the trim with the toggle switch anymore. So you see, the wheel is not rotating. If I put it on, the wheel starts to rotate. And below we have fire pan. You can have the fire warning, I'll just show you. So we have a red light here and all those red. What you need to do is you need to pull this out and rotate and you extinguish your fire. Hopefully. I'll just make it a little bit brighter. Here you see we have a VHF stations here and here. So if ATC tells you to contact 1 to 0 decimal 5 for example, you put 1 to 0. decimal 5 and put it in active you see active is on here standby is over here so 1 to 0 5 it's an operation and you can go with for example Ukraine International 1 to 5 good morning uh, this is also fire indication and extinguishing panel for the forward cargo and aft cargo so you can have the fire indication there almost the same with the fire warning bell and you can also extinguish the fire inside those compartments here we have a navigation panels here and here exactly the same here we use the VR frequency and change the mode to ILS and put in active and you have ILS indication so localizer here and glide slope and this also called MCDU, Multifunctional Control Display Unit, but it is used to communicate with the ground, with dispatch and with air traffic control by text means. So if you are CPDLC approved, you can send and receive the messages to and from the air traffic control. This is weather radar panel, very simple to use, I'll tell you later about it. This is transponder, you put the spork here and it's all for example the emergency swap is 7700 so it's emergency swap and then on the ground on the ground we put zeros right here ADF on some aircraft it's not even installed 
because it's quite old system. Here we have trim indication, rudder trim. You can see arrow goes to the right, little by little, arrow goes to the left. It's a trim indication. It's aileron trim. And the indication is here on a control call. Here we have the camera installed near the fore entry, near to the cockpit door. I just want to show you. So it's like here, so on. the door is open, etc. Sometimes we have the screen on the lower view here, sometimes we have it over here or over there. It depends on aircraft modification. It's a locking device for a cockpit door. This stop trim over right. I'll tell you some more about it later. This some light control like here, brighter dimmer, flood light over here. Guys, for the panels, I think it's all because I'm trying to be more brief, and later I'll tell you more detailed information about every system. We'll have the separate videos about it. One of the best things I like about the Boeing 737 cockpit compared to my previous aircraft type ETR-72 is that you can open the side window. Mmm, fresh air. On ATR aircraft you cannot do it, you just have this airflow over here and also on ATR you have it on the top and you just open it all the time but it's very very hot inside the cockpit especially then I was flying in Indonesia near to equator it's very very hot and we also use side window to escape from the cockpit if you have some kind of emergency and you are unable to use this door everything is broken down there for example you can evacuate from this window because it's quite huge and you just open this hatch throw there the escape rope and you go down by it. it's quite hard from this cockpit but you can do it with a rope with no problem but usually captain uh, goes to the cabin compartment to reassure that no passengers left inside the airplane but of course if there is some kind of wreckage blocking the way I can create through this window here we also have Mike Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I hope you enjoy your flight. Also here we have oxygen mask. How to use it? You mainly push these red levers, pull it out and put it on yourself and just breathe it. Put on your nose and mouth and breathe. Very easy to use. Make sure that before the flight you have a, this lever, put it down to 100% of oxygen in case of rapid decompression. This is a nozzle steering uh, located only on the left side on this airplane. There are some Boeing 737 modifications where we have the same steering wheel on the right, but here we don't have it. So only captain can taxi on this airplane. So you just operate the nozzle wheel uh, through this steering, exactly like on a car. And here we have the control column, very classic one and no any fly by wire like an airbus here we have direct linkage through the cables to the boosters to hydraulic boosters i was twice on airbus simulator with this uh, side stick fly by wire and i also like it so for me i don't feel any huge difference with the classic control comb and side stick and you can fly airbus manually as well through computers fly by wire but doesn't matter you can have almost the same pleasure of manual flight on Airbus as you can have on a Boeing. So for me it really doesn't matter. So guys it was a brief review about this Boeing 737 NG cockpit and I was trying to get this video as short as possible for better understanding. Hope you enjoyed this video, like it if you like, subscribe to my channel for the new videos and hope you have a good time.